Are we going? Good? We're good? Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Are you good? So Spanish, not, yeah, no, it's yeah I don't know. Like, it was like, I was I'm, hitting zero for a bit. I don't, I don't know. You know what? I, I can't really try. Said finish. Uh, do this. Hold on. Let me, let me kill this. Kill this real quick. I'll come back. All right, let's try. All right. Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right. So, chapter 13. So 15, just in case we decide to have any issues. Okay. Welcome in to another episode of the Nap Bros Podcast. We are so excited for you to be here as we are continuing our discussion on the book Sovereignty, the Battle for the Hearts and the Minds of Men. Now, uh, last week or last time we uh, talked about chapter 12, which is strength. This week we are in chapter 13, which is in about humility. So obviously that kind of a good, a good balance, strength, humility. So the combination of those. Um, Andrew, you want to go ahead and just give them the rundown of the introduction? I will run them down right now. In the summary, let's see. Uh, this chapter, humility. Oh, that is a tough one. Um, basically, it talks about the fine line between being humble and knowing what you're talking about and then being deceitful and acting like you know what you're talking about. So, you know, hubris, pride, playing a big part in it. You know, how if you don't know and you act like, you know, all you're doing is basically lying to yourself and others. Um, and it's okay to ask for help. So, I mean, in a nutshell, that is humility in mm -hmm. and of itself, you know, being willing to ask yep. others nice. to help. Um, definitely a big issue for me. Definitely hate being humble uh, when it comes to, oh, I mean, I'll admit it, when it comes to work and stuff and school and you know what? Just just being humble and admitting that you don't know sucks. You know, like yeah, like, yeah. I don't want them to think I'm stupid. <laughs> like, like that's all there is to it. So, yeah. um, I'll just go ahead and jump right into the introduction. Uh, it is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. He picked to said that. Yeah, yeah, it, it picked it picked it. It. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a difficult one. I was like I was like I don't know how to pronounce this. So it picked a tuss. I feel like I've heard it before and I know I just Oh, it might be it, what if it's like epic tetus? Um, is it That'd be kind of cool. Just epic and then tetus. I think it's Sure, it sounds good. Epictetus. <laughs> I'll have to, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ask for help later on about that. how to pronounce this with uh, with one of my colleagues. So, <laughs> yes. So it is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. Basically, uh, you can't learn something mm -hmm. you say you already mm -hmm. know it, right? If you know it, you don't need to learn it. If you don't know it, you yep. need to learn it. Knowing requires effort. Like I said. Um, putting it into practice. Uh, if you know, and you know you know, and you can put it into practice, that is a whole other way of showing you have knowledge on well, the subject. Well, you know, yeah. Knowing what you know and putting it into practice. But even knowledge. even in that in that regards, I think I think it's it's more so because that's like getting back into the like the knowledge thing or the wisdom thing that we had talked about, the wisdom chapter. Um, but in this one, I think it's just I think it does. I think what he's trying to say is like, in order for you to actually know something, you actually have to put in the time to learn it. And if you don't put in the time, if you don't put in the effort to learn it, whether it's going out there and trying it out, if it's something more tangible, more physical, if it's a knowledge and just a brain based thing, then going and learning that. Like, like right now, I could easily sit there and admit that biology, I, I don't know it. I don't have any idea about it. I've even told my students to an extent, I don't know it. But even to that extent, like one of the things that I am teaching in literature or, or even in, in uh, rhetoric, even there are some things in that that I don't really understand. And it's difficult to 
to uh, and what I should be doing and what I am trying to do is going and learning more about it. That way I can present it to my students as well. And so, yeah, instead of just pretending like, oh, okay, I know everything that's going on. And it's very challenging, especially for me at work, um, it, 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 even in relationship to like better teaching practices, not the subject matter so much and not knowing the subject matter, but also what's the, what's the best way to correct a student who is sleeping in class? What's the best way to help a student out that, that is uh, being obnoxious in class, you know, those types of things. And so trying to pretend like I know what's going on and, and then go and broadcast that out. Cause that's the other thing is like, for me, I like to go and let people know that I know. Like, let me tell you what I know, even though I don't know it. Let me tell you what I know, even though I'm not sure. But here's what I know. You need to listen to me. And that kind of thing. So, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. let's get into the questions. Um, one of the things so, that he talks about is he talks, knowing he talks about know. X, Y, Zs. And that, that if you're a man, you're supposed to know X, Y, and Z. And that like, toddlers are allowed to have... Uh, like, like toddlers or little boys are allowed to have like, oh, okay, you didn't know how to pronounce that word or you didn't know that that was going to, you know, cause you to trip or that kind of thing. And it's, it's allowed for that. But then when you're a man, there are, there are certain things that you're expected to know, certain X's, certain Y's, certain Z's that you are supposed to know. And so first question, what are some X, Y, Z's for you? That, that you think we should know or that, that you feel like someone expects you to know? Mm. How to drive a car. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's a sellout. That's an easy one. Um, what are some X, Y, Zs we should know or we are expected Sorry, we, to know? Yeah, yeah, yeah I did ask. ask we should know. I, I, know. Meaning expected to know because you are a man, to be more specific. What are X, Y, Zs because you are a man that you're expected so, to know? Well, do you want, do you want I mean, me to go first and give you some time to think about on it? it? You know, no, no, because then I'm never going to go. True. True. I would say as far as like a man principle, um, things I should know is like how to treat a lady. Uh, how to conduct myself in public. Like, um, in how to provide. Okay. Or like how to make money, right? Honestly, like as a man, you know. Right. So like what I'm looking at is not so much what's what's expected for me to know, but what I would get ridiculed for not knowing if I found out I didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, like you're all like, because I, I mean, it's not like, hey, you need to know this, 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 and this. It's like, if I didn't know this, someone would say something. So like, for instance, how to act in public, how to, and that's not just me, I think that's mm -hmm. anybody, how to act in public, how to compose myself mm -hmm. at a job, compose myself at school, you know, how to, I don't know, well, raise kids, raise a family. So after that minor in, uh, internet malfunction, Lord willing, this will continue working. Um, so um, getting back to this idea of the XYZ, uh, things, that, the things, things that we're supposed to know as men. Like I think, I think for instance, uh, one of the things that is kind of required, especially in the States that, that we know is um, how to, how to, fix or work on a car like i think that that's just a requirement like i think i think it's like if you don't know that as a man even even as a man like in my mind if someone tells me like hey i don't know how to like change the oil in my car to an change extent just because like or like yeah okay change the tires but yeah much easier i don't know how to change a tire it's like like for for women or for girls that I know, for the females, I'm like, okay, that's understandable. That's not really something that I would imagine you doing. That. And I, and I'm not saying that like like more so to the men, but but like even on the women's side, like if someone comes up and they're like, I don't know how to cook. Like really? Like your mama didn't teach you how to cook. Your daddy didn't teach you how to cook. Like somebody should have taught you how to cook. But that being said, I think that that kind of like goes into like the sexist terms and stuff like that, or, or goes into the sexism. And and I think it's. 
I, I, I still – because I because like in my mind, it's not so much that the woman needs to know cooking and she needs to stay in the kitchen. It's like everybody should learn cooking. Just like if you have a car, you should kind of have an idea of like the basic knowledge of how your car works and how to fix certain things like a tire. And so like, like changing a tire, I think that that's just a natural – knowing where the gas – which side the gas is on. I think that that's an important well, it's, thing. It's not, um, it's not that you feel that way because that kind of segues in the next point. Is like when you're ridiculed for not knowing these things, do you ever really mm-hmm. feel like admitting you don't know, you know? And that, right. that's the biggest thing. It's like, like, I don't like the feeling of telling somebody I don't know what they're talking about, especially if they're like, hey, go do this, 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 this. And I'm like, um, okay. Yeah. yeah but yeah, then yeah. it's like, really, it should be like, can we go back to step one and you explain to me what the crap you're talking about? Right. Because I didn't, uh, even, I didn't understand the first step. But like, so, what is but, so? So besides that, like, like, so do you get ridiculed when that happened? Uh, or just more depends. I mean, I mean, like, like for right now, it's not that bad. Well, if you get ridiculed, of course you're embarrassed, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, like can you can you remember? Can you remember the pride f- thing? Yeah. Like the ego, can you remember the first right? time that like, you that you had uh, an embarrassing or, or 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 you got ridiculed for not knowing something? Like, cause I'm I, like I am trying to think like back to when when I was a child, if there was something that. Like I didn't know how to do that. I technically, or like, like according to being a man, like I was supposed to know how to do it. You know, actually, I it mean, wasn't so much that I, I was mean, ridiculed. I would say, Go ahead. I would say the 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 one thing that I feel like anybody would have been ridiculed for is, and I can't think of a specific point is like if your parents tell you like you should know better than to do something, or mm-hmm. what were you thinking, you know. Were you thinking at all? That's the first like ridiculed moment. Now, as far as like, I remember one when I was started working at, at my first job here, and I mean, I got I got my butt beat almost as far as like how burnt I felt at the end of that conversation. It's just, mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't know any better, but I'm sure that played a big part in me not wanting to ask. Yeah, Ooh. or even act like I didn't know what I was talking about. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, even now with my new job, um, it's so hard. One to ask, and two, um, I don't know. Like, like it's just it is hard to ask. Honestly, it is hard to humble yeah. yourself. But then again, like. You know, they might have a new way of showing you something. You'd be like, well, that just took like two seconds versus me figuring it out in like an hour. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But that, don't get there. You're jumping ahead. We're not jumping there, okay? We're not getting there yet. Um, I think the first time that I was embarrassed, I wasn't ridiculed for not knowing this, but the first time I was embarrassed was not knowing what a crescent wrench was. Like that was – I remember we were living in Wyoming at the time, and it was like my first like – like my first like manual labor job, like all the other jobs I had had, I was working at a golf course, I was working at McDonald's, I was working at a pizza hut, like all those. But then this was like the first like manual job. I'm like throwing hay and I'm trying to help this guy around the farm. And I'm like, he's like, all right, go get me a crescent wrench. And I'm like, okay. And I went out. I forget if I went out and like just looked at the toolbox and was like, um, wrench. Like I knew what a wrench was, but a crescent wrench was a different thing. Uh, I was like, I was like, surely there's something like like that will like just maybe it says its name on it. Maybe it's like crescent wrench, or maybe it speaks to me. It's like hello, I'm the crescent wrench. Well, I was like, okay, well, cool. Well, that that is that is the point. It was it's actually called an adjustable wrench. Crescent wrench is the brand. Just like it's called channel locks. As the brand, but like the actual name of it's like interlocking pliers or something like that. I don't know what the but I mean, but I mean, even 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like even so, like like, but still, it's it's still named like a crescent wrench. Like people will call it a crescent wrench. Most people will refer to it as a crescent wrench, as opposed to it. I never knew that story about you because actually, my first job out in the oil field was 
I had the same incident happen. They asked me to get them a crescent wrench. I brought them back a pipe wrench. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was like like the first time that happened, I was like, I was like, how do I not know these tools? I'm a guy. And again, it wasn't so much that he ridiculed me. And it, and even when I went back, because I'm pretty sure I didn't bring him anything. I went back and I said, I'm sorry, I don't know which one of the crescent wrenches. And I'm pretty sure, like, after I asked him, he was like, oh, okay, it's this one. It's the one that, that you twist in the middle and it moves back over. Oh, that thingy, the the adjustable thingamajig bob. That's, like, in my mind, like, it was just, like, the widening and shortening one, the, the bigger and smaller one. Like, I just, you know, after going back and asking, it wasn't anything. It was more of an internal thing, a mental thing. And I don't know where this idea came from that I should know every possible tool and tool name in a toolbox but like that, that for me is like kind of something that I that I do know or that I that I am expected to yeah, know. Yeah, because you know, um, even even you know, crest, even to the extent of like knowing whether what, what's what's a like knowing the flathead and then a Phillips head and screwdriver. Like obviously, flathead pretty self explanatory. But if someone's like, hey, I they need don't a Phillips call head, it flathead. In my mind, I'm like, they don't. They, they don't. Not. They don't call it flathead no more. They call it a straight head. Okay, straight head, whatever. That's, that's so beautiful. So Listen, beautiful. Listen, back back when that, back when we were younger, it was flathead, man. It was just that's what it was. So, but yeah, I mean, I think I think those are kind of the like some of the things that were expected of us to know, uh, and that was one. Um, so, so not knowing something kind of leads into this idea of hubris, where now in order to to prevent yourself from being ridiculed or prevent yourself from being embarrassed you BS your way into uh, knowledge. You're just, you're just BSing what you know and you don't actually know it. And so hubris, according to the Greeks back in the day, was, was basically translated as, as someone who showed or exhibited foolishness or dangerous overconfidence. And, and it's interesting that it's like foolishness, foolishness and, and dangerous overconfidence. Not overconfidence, but dangerous overconfidence. And even to that extent, like sometimes overconfidence, you know, like, like, I don't want to say most times, but most, I I would say maybe most times overconfidence leads to dangerous things. Like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say it here because, because one of the things that, that I know, like in, in China, one of the things, and I don't think it's like, there's like, there's, there's an interesting dichotomy here in China where, uh. You have like kind of this juxtaposition where on the one hand, they're they're very pro- proud. But on the other hand, they're also like humble. But it's like it's like if you – like where we would go into a job application and we would say, let me tell you all the good things I've done and kind of like ignore the bad things. And even if it's something that's like minuscule, like a minor thing, you try and like blow that thing up into like really big. You're like, this is amazing. And you go in and you do that. And so like – you have like pride or confidence going into that job interview. As we're here in China, what I've noticed is like generally if somebody goes into a job interview, it's not really – they're trying to be humble or if you're – even like if you're like thanking them for doing something, they're like, no, 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 don't thank me. Like, like I, you know, I, you know it's, it's fine or whatever. Or if they give you something, you're like, oh, thank you so much. And they're like, no, 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 it's nothing. Like there, there's a humility. But even, even some Chinese people will admit – there's, there's also like that fake humility where it's like, you know, they want the praise, they want the honors, they want everything that you're giving to them. And then they're trying to pretend like even in, even in Chinese, they have this, like, basically I've been, I've been told this and they will give compliments left and right. I have people tell me that my Chinese is good in Chinese. And so there are three ways to respond. One is the traditional like Western way. Thank you. Like, thank you. I appreciate that. That's, but it's also like the not really major Chinese way of doing it. The second way is to, uh, to be like, no, 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 like, like to deny it. Like, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not that good. I'm not that good. Even though like in all honesty, I'm really not that good. But the third way is even, even better. You're like, like they're complimenting your, your, your Chinese and you're like, you're like looking around and you're saying in Chinese, you're saying like, where, 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 like, as if you're saying like, who's, who's the person who's good at Chinese? Who's, so you're like kind of deflecting it. But in all honesty, like it's kind of still more of this idea that you're you're accepting the praise, but by like denying it. And so it's kind of like a faker humility. But I'm not saying like all the time that when they're being humble, that they're being fake humble. But on the other hand, if you go and you ask somebody a question, 
like maybe for directions and I've, and I've run into this and I'll ask them for directions. I'm like, hey, do you know where da 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 is? Or like, where's the bathroom? That's generally the first thing I need to know. Where's the bathroom? And they'll point in a direction and they'll just say there in Chinese. I'm like, okay. So I turn and I go in that direction. Now, after wandering for probably 15 minutes in that direction, I realize this person had no idea where the bathroom was because come to find out it's actually on the opposite side of what they pointed. And so it's like, why did they point that way? Why did they say it's there? Why did they just say, I don't know? What's like, like, can you not just say, I don't know? Instead of sending me on a one, you know, I got to poop or I got to pee really bad. Why are you sending me on a wild goose chase over there? And, and one of the challenging things is like this idea of face is like, they don't want to be embarrassed. And so to say, I don't know, it's kind of an embarrassing thing. Like you, you're required to kind of know everything. Especially to a foreigner. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah, definitely, especially to a foreigner, but to, to like anybody. Like I'll have people come up and tell me, like Chinese people come up and tell me how America is. And I'm like, huh. I'm like, have you, have you been to America? No. Have, have you like, like been like, have you been around Americans? Well, uh, no, not exactly. Like, I'm like, how, why in the world do you know this? And it's just kind of like this idea that like you've been growing up knowing that you, you can't make mistakes here in China. Like generally you're not allowed to make mistakes. You're not allowed to question things. You just take whatever the teacher tells you. And so if the teacher tells you America is like this, that's just how it is. And so it's really fascinating to kind of run into this and, and kind of see what, what goes on in the Chinese mind. So what's an area that you would say that you have hubris in? Multitasking. Driving okay. and texting. Mm. That is a Ooh, dangerous okay. overconfidence. You liked it, didn't you? Um, like expecting, like knowing that you're like, you're like, oh, I'm a good driver and I can look at my phone at the same time. Yeah, this is fine. <laughs> so, so I mean, here I mean, that. <laughs> being, being an engineer, like if you even remotely act like you know what you're talking about, the the consequences could be so dire, especially if you're in charge of like some kind of structural building or you know like any kind of system you're trying to implement, you know. But I don't think that I don't I don't like to actually act like I do know that much, you know. Like not like a dangerous ever comments. Like I said, you know, there's things that I do in my everyday life that I shouldn't do that I feel like I'm okay at you mm -hmm. know maybe maybe texting and driving maybe talking back yeah talking back to my parents still even though i'm a grown man <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah dangerous yeah. Comments. i'm not like this that's, that's a different like i wouldn't i like, say so, like my job i, I my job's not too bad right now, but there are various things with like, you know, you're so confident in your own thing, but you have no idea what you're doing. You could cause a big issue down the road. What, what is, yeah. so let's, so let's say, let's say it's not like, not necessarily like a dangerous overconfidence, but maybe, maybe not something that you like show outwardly. Like, and I'll, and I'll give you an example from my perspective, like, like not something that you show outwardly, but just kind of something that maybe mentally you're, you're, you're sitting there, you're holding into this like hubris kind of thing where you're like, oh no, I got this. And like one of my big ones is it's not that I'm going to sit there and like go out and tell people how to teach. Like that's one thing. But in my mind, I'm also not going to go like the way that I think about it is I'm like, I'm like, I'm a good enough teacher. I don't really need to necessarily work on my skills in teaching. Like I don't necessarily need to go and watch how other teachers teach and, and use some of their ideas. I'm good enough. It's not that I'm going to go out there and be like, listen, guys, I know how to teach. Let me tell you how to teach. It's not that. It's more along the lines like I just won't go and seek advice or, or, or I won't go and watch how others do it in order to learn something from them. That's my biggest issue. That's probably a huge area that I've got hubris in. Anything like that with you like yeah, that? Well, that I doesn't necessarily. No, I don't, I don't know that I necessarily have that. Like, I, I'll admit, I don't like asking for help. 
Mm-hmm. It's not so bad that, that I will make the mistake because I'm more afraid of making a mistake and doing something worse off than actually doing something. You know, it's, it's, I don't know, everyday tasks is something my new, I, I don't like asking for help. I like to act like I know what I'm doing and I don't. Or, yeah. Oh, let's see. What's, what's a good one? Um, well, if you want to, we can segue into asking for help and we can talk about that if you want to. Yeah, why don't you help me and tell me what I'm, I have hubris and I feel like an outside source would be. Be better, Judge. You know, you uh, like that, that is that is that segue. That is a that is a, that is a good that is a good point. That is a great segue. Um, hubris, man. Let's see. I would I would say maybe. I think I think I think something that in, in, in this isn't, and I'm not necessarily like pointing out any particular things, but like maybe maybe no, by all means, point. maybe <laughs> maybe in the realm of like of like parenting. No, I'm not saying that you come to me no, and ask me like, for since I don't have any. I suck at parenting. Oh, and you're, you're like, you're like suck, okay, I suck, suck at parenting so like, and I know I that I should. I don't think that. Oh, yeah, definitely. But like, definitely there's time but, where it's like, oops. But the thing is, like, do you ask for help with parenting? Like, do you go and get advice? Because no. I know I, I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say anything about our parents, but I kind of know that, like, it's challenging for us to ask our parents for particular like adult type things, like whether it's parenting or whether it's just being an adult or being married and stuff like that. Like just not, not asking specifically about that. And even, even for me asking for help in relationship to like my marriage, like whenever my wife and I have a, uh, whenever my wife and I have like some kind of argument or something like that, like instead of going and, trying to figure out that's one huge thing is I, I'll say that I have a lot of hubris in that. And that's definitely dangerous. It's like, if I have, if I have an argument with her, I'm like, I'm right. You're wrong. That's it. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. I'm right. I don't actually like yell at her, but in my mind, all this stuff is going on. And so like, if, if she gets upset with me, I'm like, well, she got upset because she's wrong. That's what happened. And it's like, mm, that's not really a good way to, to be, but yeah, kind of, Kind of like understanding that 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 everyone everyone is better at something. Like there are definitely people who are better at marriage than I am. Now I'm not saying that like the people that that are around me are necessarily better. Like like, but I know that there are definitely couples out there and and that are better at marriage. But but understanding that everyone is smarter than us at something. Like once we move into that, then. We can start asking for help. We can start asking them to, to like, guide us, right? Yeah, I mean, I I would agree with that. I mean, knowing you have limitations in it, you know, but then again, you don't know until you fail. So, like, that's the other issue. It's like, hey, I'm good. I'm golden. And then, bam, oh, man, I just, I failed that miserably. So, then you ask for help. So, it's like, like, I mean, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So it's like, um, to a point, and then, you know, like when I when I landed this job, I, I was honest with them. I was like, you know, it's a, I am a, I am a design engineer, and I was like, and it's solid work, your AutoCAD. And I was like, listen, like, be hundred percent honest with you, I am not that great at this stuff because I never really put my efforts into it, you know. I love the hands-on parts of work. I love tearing machines apart and putting them back together, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And the positions like that, you're going to work 70 plus hours a week. And like, you know, that's not what I want. Whereas this job, I'm only working like 45, 46 hours a week. And it's beautiful. Like it's love, you know, maybe I might work a Saturday every once in a while. So it's like, it's like, you know, I, I, I tell them up front, I never, I never try and oversell myself because it always bites me in the butt. And I tell them, you know, it's like, I find myself being better about it. You know, someone's like, you know how to do this. Or they, they word it one way. It's like, hey, go get me an adjustable wrench versus a crescent wrench. You know, it's like, well, explain what you mean to me. Like, I'm not quite sure I'm following. And so it's like they step mm-hmm. through it. Oh, okay, now I understand. So 
you know, it might just be a difference of terms, difference of right. of concepts. So it's like, now, nah, especially with work, like it's like, hey, this, 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 you ever done this? No, walk me through it like I'm dumb or something like that. Start me off in the yeah, beginning yeah. like I'm a brand new person, don't know what you're talking about. And right. so it's like, the, the and then like that, that's another thing. It's like, you know, like I said, I'm not great with solid works and all that. I, I can, I can, I can make it work. <laughs> I can open the browser, you know, I'm just joking. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it's like, um, you know, so there's issues that come up. It's like, what's going on here? Like, am I doing something wrong or is the computer? And that, that's, there's been a lot of that at the company that I work for. It's like, it's actually the computer's messing up and it's not me. It's like, oh, okay. So you're like, but you're so afraid to ask for help because you're thinking right. you're doing something wrong. And right. so, yeah, I mean, of course it's hard, but I think if you go into it being like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, don't sell yourself so much higher, then like you can't fail, you know? They know. Yeah. yeah. And it's a dangerous Already. thing too. Like if you if you put that on like your resume, you're like, oh yeah, no, I'm really good at this, 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 and this. And then you get in there and you're actually not. Right. And so like that, that's, that definitely pulls into why humility is actually like a strength and why being humble about what you're good at and what you don't know actually makes you stronger as a person. And so like, I, I think it's, I think it's interesting um, where, where he talks about humility being a strength and that like being humble and admitting to, and, and I, he doesn't really talk about admitting to mistakes. Uh, Cause I think, I think he, 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 he definitely hits that with ownership, but I think humility is also that as well. It's like, you have to be humble in order to take ownership of things that you mess up. And so one thing that I've noticed is like, for instance, politicians and business owners and, and many other men, even dads, you know, when they make mistakes, like, and I, and I, and I can tell you like, like, I, actually, I'll tell you this. And I don't know if you ever had this, this instance with dad or not, but I remember one time, dad, dad, what did dad do? Dad did something. I, I, don't, I don't really remember what it was, but he messed up bad. Now he's going to, mom's going to, mom's going to be listening to this. Hi mom. Um, and, and so, but dad, dad did something. Dad. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Dad did something bad, but I can distinct, I don't even remember what it was that he did wrong, but I can remember him coming in and apologizing. And that to me, like, that's something that I definitely would say that they, they taught me in that relation. Cause I, cause I know that there have been times, especially in, in like, I don't know if dad would admit this or not, but there have definitely been things that have happened in, in our lives in growing up where an apology would have been expected. You know, like, like if you would, if you had done that to somebody else, an apology would have been expected. And, and, and so there are definitely times where, where he's missed out, but I mean, I can't, I can't expect him to be perfect. Right. Like I know that he's mm-hmm. like, and I think that that's one thing that I've learned is that my dad's a human. Like if I get to mess up and make mistakes, he does too. And even, even if one of the mistakes is just kind of like perpetuating a mistake, not, not apologizing for a mistake. And so still being forgiving in that. And I think it takes a lot of humility to, to be able to, to forgive as well. It's, it's recognizing in yourself that you make mistakes. And so therefore you can forgive other people for making mistakes and kind of understanding that. But like, I know nowadays, like it's very difficult for people to admit their mistakes and it's difficult because they don't want to show that they're inadequate in something. They don't show weakness. Yeah. Or inadequacy. And so what I'm wondering is like, yeah. Like I do distinctly yeah. remember one time where he apologized and I was like, that blew me away. And that was the yeah, one nah, thing that I nah, learned. Nah, like, I don't, I don't, I don't remember that at all. Honestly, like I don't know what you're Well, no, no, no. I'm not saying he apologized to you. He apologized to me for something. I forget what it was, but. Was it in your adult yeah. life? Cause I don't, I don't I think it might've been when we were children. Um, I, for, I forget. Yeah. I forget what it was. Actually, I think he, I think he even, I, mm, hmm. You remember that? Okay, so so we're gonna we're gonna go into a little bit of like history story and stuff like that because this will be this will be kind of fun. It'll be fun to kind of explore this. Um, do you remember a time? Well, okay, so you remember it very differently than what I do, 
Um, because in your mind, it was when I stuck my finger in the electric socket, but that's not actually what happened because you were too young to remember that. Uh, or you remember the electric socket, but you were too young to remember what you actually got spanked for. So there was a time uh, where you no, got I was, spanked. I, I was profusely blamed for something. I remember that. I was you were profusely blamed. I, I, that, that is absolutely 100% correct. But it had nothing to do with me sticking my finger in an electric outlet. Because like you can't like hide that. Like You stick it in, your fingers get black, you come out screaming because you stuck something metal in the electric outlet and you're a stupid child and just, ah! So you can't really hide that. And I can't really blame you for like grabbing my hand and putting it in there. Um but there was something definitely, and I forget, it was like something that got broken by me or, or I stole something or whatever. And they came and they asked, and I blamed it 100% on you. And you ended up getting spanked for it. And I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I think they apologized to you. I think dad apologized to you. But, but again, you being so young, like there was that, there was that moment. But, but I, think, I think they apologized to you. And that, and I, and I do kind of remember that for that reason, but I also remember it because I also got punished a, like a lot for that. I got grounded for, more, I don't know, yeah. X amount of days. Yeah, it was like the worst ever. But having that in my memory of like realizing that, that, you know, that there was an apology that was there for me, at least that I do remember, not necessarily in that, in that thing, but, but I don't, I, I wasn't sure if you had remembered if they had apologized to you, if dad had apologized, I'm not sure. But I know. No, I, I don't. I do not remember. Honestly, like, okay. I'm not saying they didn't. I just don't. I remember you got punished. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all you wanted in life. That's apology enough. Mm. Don't need to apologize. Just punish my brother. Apology. <laughs> that's right. It's my kind of apology. Well, yeah, kind of, kind of that so idea. Long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, but, but I do remember, so like, but going into this inadequacy um, and, and being inadequate in certain things, are there any inadequacies in your mind that, that, that you are either trying to cover up or trying to overcompensate for that you can think about? Because I, I it, it, go ahead, if you've got one. Uh, I don't know. Um, okay, let me let me let me let me lead off. Let, and you let think me about it, let okay? me let me let me be honest. Um, okay, I don't try. I don't try and cover them up, but I do have faults as a father, and faults as a husband, and faults as mm -hmm. a human being. Um, I don't like get into details about those. Or not? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can get into a bunch of details. I mean, like. Like we could spend all night talking about my details if you really wanted to. Um, I don't know. Um, going into a relationship thinking you know how to be in a relationship and now realizing you have no idea what you're doing. Uh, parenting your kids and then realizing that you're wrong for it. Uh, for what you thought was right or, mm -hmm. you know, like... For instance, like, it's hard for me to take my kid's side because, like, I was never taught that there was any other side. Like, for instance, you know, like, if I got in trouble at school, dads are like, yeah, Andrew's a troublemaker, so I'm going to take him home with me and whoop him again. So it's like mm. that whole thing right there. So it's like if somebody comes to me like my child and says, um, uh, uh, um, he's like, Hey, somebody said this to me. My first question is like, well, what did you do to them? You know, and, you know, I'll do that with my wife too. Like, what did mm -hmm. you do to cause that issue? Well, what makes you think I did anything? Well, people don't just randomly come up and do this kind of stuff to you. And I'm not saying I'm wrong, but that's just, that's just how I was geared. That's how I was reared. That's how I was raised. That's how I was taught. You know, like I, I, I know and then plus, uh, uh, half the time it was true. I, I did do something that, that warranted the response. <laughs> so, so theoretically, I mean, that's that. That's not necessarily something that you're inadequate at. It's, <laughs> but but I guess if it's all the time, that's where the issue comes in, right? And, and but I'm saying like I don't give them the benefit. I don't give them the benefit of that. I just assume, and so. You know, oh, gotcha. Oh, okay, okay. So, 
So instead of giving him the benefit of a doubt, it's just like instantly you did something wrong. What is it? Instead of well, like I mean, the question the is, is like, what did you do? I mean, it's not, it's not just him. It's my wife too. All my kids. Yeah. You know, it's like, what did you yeah. do to deserve it? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. But it's it's crazy to think like, you know, the this day and age, people just be doing stupid, evil things for no reason. You know, you don't have to do nothing to them half the time. I mean, it's, well, it's stupid, evil things, but but also, like, understanding and, and, like, I can get why some people do what they do because of the fact that, like, there's probably some other underlying issue in that they're not, they're not happy about their lives or they're not, uh, you know, or they, they see you do something. And, like, actually, even going back to this inadequacy, this is something that's really interesting to me because – because for me, like probably my biggest inadequacy, the, the one that I would say is a glaring mistake, and I'm going to put this on public record because I want it out there for the world to know. I like pornography is still an addiction for me. Like that's a huge, huge problem for me. Like it's it, e- even now I struggle with it. Like like looking at it either on the internet or or you know trying to search for it. Like that's a huge, huge thing. And now I know some people will probably watching this or some people will be like, oh, no, no, no. Pornography is like just a natural thing. It's not. It's not. Like, like I will disagree 100 like, vehemently with that. But one of the things that I – so going, going back to this idea of humility and putting that out there, one of the things that I struggle with is like if somebody's struggling with pornography or somebody's struggling with something sexual, like since that's like my number one, like my, my biggest issue – is this sexuality and, 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 and pornography. If I hear somebody else yeah. is doing that, I'm like, yo, like that's the worst, man. You can't be doing that. You're a bad person because in all honesty, I'm kind of like, it's kind of like if I'm assuming they are the way that I am. And so like, I'm already being hard on myself, but it's also very easy for me to be hard on somebody else instead of like actually having the humility and being like, listen, I get it. Like, Sex, pornography, those are things that are just tough as all get up, difficult to fight against. And and I understand that. But instead, like, again, that ego, that pride, that hubris is what makes me be like, you got something wrong with you. I'm good. You're messed up. And and so, like, e- even getting into this and, and, and part of the reason why I say that is like, it, like, bring that out is because, like, the more... So what's, what's really interesting, I've never seen the movie Eight Mile, but Gary Vaynerchuk talks about it all the time. And, and one of the things that he talks about is he talks about like in Eight Mile, what Eminem's character does is he starts rapping about his own problems, his own issues, so that the guy he's going up against has nothing to go on. And like there's a freedom that comes with being open and honest and being humble and, and, and not hiding your inadequacies and not hiding your problems that now all of a sudden the freedom's out there. So that way it's not like something that's hidden and like tucked away. I say bad words. I cuss all the time. Like that's a huge, I, I wouldn't say that's an inadequacy, like, cause I've, I've started to kind of like change my concept of, of how curse words are. But, but even that, like, I won't necessarily put it out on YouTube, but like, yeah, I say bad words often. Do I need to dwindle it down? Of course, because I shouldn't be cussing as much as I do. Um, I also like to vape. Like that's that's something that I've just recently started uh, doing, and I enjoy it. Um, but that's that's an inadequacy. That's a, that's a that's a health weakness in in essence. Um, you know, it's it's something that I'm not necessarily addicted to it, but I could be um, at some point. And I and I think that this is. Some somewhat what he's talking about. Maybe I'm getting off on a tangent with this, but I think that presenting this as an inadequacy, you know, is is going to be, you know, kind of kind of opening an eye opening experience. Is that yeah? I mean, I have a lot of inadequacies, and I just need to understand that there are people out there who are willing, who have been through what I've been through, and have gotten to the other side, and are willing to help me out. And I just got to go and to revisit the previous point, ask for help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll admit, you know, there's it is a lot better to put your drama out there because then it's like, well, you can't use it against me, and and I can't believe you never like I've never seen the movie full out, but I've I've seen that 
bit, and I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice by not watching that. I mean, like, I guess, I mean, like, I, I should believe, watch 8 Mile. I can't and, believe like, you've not seen... Yeah, I mean, I just, I just can't believe you haven't seen that part. I mean, it's like... I mean... Clar- Clarence knew both his mom and dad. It was just so funny. It's sort of how it yeah. goes. And yeah, it's... I mean, uh, yeah, you, you... First off, let's just... Let's clear this up. After we get off of here, you go watch it. Just find a YouTube clip of it, you know? Clarence and <laughs> okay. them rapping. Eight mile. All right, all right. Um, uh, yeah, you're doing yourself a disservice, but I agree with that. It's easier to put your own faults out there, so that way there's no... There's no room for anybody else to use something against you, you know? I agree yeah. with that 100%. Uh, a big problem I have is... You know, there's, there's three or four words. I just, I'm going to go ahead and jump right in the next one. It's like, I would go not ahead. say I'm arrogant. I would not say I'm arrogant. You know, I feel like... I feel like I could be a little cocky and I could be a little conceited. And, you know, it goes like the, the Kid Rock song, you know. If you remember that song, they say I'm cocky. But it's not bragging if you can back it up. I, I'm skipping some cuss words and stuff like okay, that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, basically, it's like, yeah, I'm I'm kind of cocky. Yeah, I'm kind of confident. Um, I feel like I can back most of them up. But there are some times where I'm a little arrogant too in how I address people. Um, Hey, hold like, that, hold that instance, thought. Real, give, give me a second. Give me hold that for instance. I gotta go get my plug. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Go. So, what I was thinking is, um, not arrogant, but at the same time, I don't feel confident sometimes. But then at sometimes I am cocky. I can see it's like it's all just a fine line, also between all four of those things for me. Um, I think if there's, I, I think if there's I like, like I don't like I don't like to brag on myself though. Like if I can do something well, like I don't like to just be all like, oh look at me doing what I do, you know. Um, I think yeah. I think one of the things is if you if you're if you're confident, like I think. I think kind of one of the ideas of, of being confident, this idea of confidence versus arrogance, I think there's, I think the confidence is more, I think arrogance is just being like, you're the best of the best in whatever it is that you're, you're doing. And that confidence is more along the lines of like, in a nice way, like, like, like more, more out of, I think arrogance comes from a place of, uh, um, like egotism or like like better than thee, better than thou kind of kind of way of it. And then confidence comes from like a loving relationship, but also being very comfortable with who you are. And so like going going to that idea where, where he talks about like the, the, the humble the humble man isn't somebody who gets like pushed around or or stepped on or manipulated. We'll, we'll come back to that in a little bit, but it's but it's more about being like understanding what issues you have or what your shortcomings are and then working on those having, cause like arrogant people have shortcomings, but aren't really working on those. Cause they're, they're trying to deflect it and trying to push it away and, and like trying to present a, a, a false, like truth. Persona. Right. As where a confident person will be like, you know what? I can't do this. I have problems with this. These are issues. And so then they'll go and like actually seek for help. It's more of be about being confident, being confident in your weakness, being confident in your, in your, uh, in the challenges that you have. I'm confident in my lean manufacturing skills. I'm confident in my problem solving skills. I'm mm-hmm. confident that I am more of a hardware than a software guy. Okay. Yeah. Like I, I would say as far as, but, but like, 
like I guess I guess like confidence is more along the lines of like what is it that that like what are shortcomings that you're working on that you're willing to like present to the world or present even to this podcast like what are what are some shortcomings that you are working on I mean they have like different um models just for like the hardware software stuff they have different like training videos for mm-hmm. Um, for these the different software. softwares that I'm watching, yeah, and I get better location. And then also, like, you know, where I was a team lead before, and I let go, got let go. Not saying it from fault to my own, but then again, for me to sit there and say I didn't play a part in it would be <clears throat> arrogant in and of mm-hmm. itself. Mm-hmm. So. Learning how to be a leader again is something I'm working on every day. Okay. Because some guy, you. I hope to lead something, you know, plant wise, manager, business, CEO. I don't know, a whole bunch of different things. I think one of the shortcomings that I've definitely got that I'm that I'm not not you know I've really so I'll, I'll give you a shortcoming that I'm working on and a shortcoming that I'm not working on. Shortcoming that I'm working on is work exercise, and what I've realized is like 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 getting getting physically fit. Like that's that's a huge thing, and 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 not even that, but also not even knowing what kind of exercises I need to do, and what kind of food I need to eat. Like 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 kind of like having. And so what I've done is like going out and seeking help and going and getting that help from a coach or going and getting that help from somebody else. The knowing about exercise and and knowing about. Um, like what to eat are my first one. The then that's that's one that I'm working on by getting a coach and, and getting somebody to help me out and figuring out what what I need to do. The shortcoming that I'm not working on that I really need to is just YouTube, just being addicted to YouTube. And it's affecting like how I work and stuff like that. Like I try and figure out how to like what I'll do is I'll be like I'll, I'll look at the time and I'm like, hmm, well, I I don't really have to work until tomorrow morning. Cause that's the latest I could possibly get, get a lesson done or the latest I could possibly get grading done or the latest I could possibly get something else done. And so like everything else gets put on the back burner for me to be able to watch YouTube instead of, and it, and it causes me a lot of stress later on, but that's, that's a huge issue that I'm not working on. And I don't have like, it's very difficult for me because whenever my wife calls me out on it, it's, it's a challenging, um, I, I hate it. I absolutely hate it whenever whenever she calls me out on it. She's like, "You've been watching too much YouTube." And I'm like, "What the hell's wrong with YouTube? Why can't I watch YouTube?" But it's it's actually just my arrogance and my pride kicking in at that point. So, well, yeah. not, it's funny you say that. So you know, you brought up YouTube. Freaking I YouTube. procrastinate so bad. Um. <clears throat> Especially now I, I graduate, there's nothing pushing me. I have to be doing what I need to be doing, you know, right? Except for working, right? And then the other one is like, um, I do myself a disservice by trying to do too much, like, like not, not managing my time, as I heard somebody say today, but managing my priorities. Mm. So, you know, I don't leave myself enough of a margin for me to do, you know, self-reflection, self-care, thinking, relaxing, you know, regenerating, recouping, all that stuff, which is, those are words I learned today. Okay. Like, for instance, you know, I worked all day. Had a class, you know, training session, lunch. Mm-hmm. Got got off work, went to chiropractor, got home, went shopping, ate dinner, went shopping some more, got back home, put the kids in bed, <clears throat> put the wife to bed, went to sleep, got woken up, made love. Then come out here and do podcasts, you know. Took a shower, podcast. I mean, I mean, you know. You know Glad you took the shower. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but the point is, like, that where 
where have I had time in there for myself? Huh. You know, driving to work, driving home, an hour lunch break. That's about all I have. And most of the time, I'm either listening to a podcast or reading books, you know, yeah. like Sovereignty or Fall in Love, Stay in Love or FE exam prep work. I mean, it's never me just sitting still, so to speak. I don't think I can I mean, sit still. I sure as heck don't watch. I mean, I do watch some shows. There's like Reacher. I did watch that show all the way through over the weekend. Mm. So, but yeah, um, definitely have some shortcomings with taking care of myself and just giving myself enough downtime. You know, I'm always just having to go. I'm always just balls in the air. All my balls are in the air at one time, just trying to juggle seven balls in the air at the same time. I wonder. I wonder if if that isn't isn't so much connected to this, but more so, it, it's more along the lines of like like being able to get to a humble place. Because I wonder if like in your mind, having all these different things going on makes you look important, or makes you look uh, uh, productive or successful. And maybe that's where the humility needs to come in is that you're realizing, like, I am successful. I am productive. But it's okay to have times where I'm, I'm just kind of like recuperating for myself and like, like, like re-energizing for myself. Like me, I'm the opposite of it. I'm just lazy. It's not, it's not like I need to do all these different things and like, I'm like I do need to do them, but it's not like I'm like, I got to juggle a bunch of balls. It's more of just like, uh, how late can I do this? Let me, let me see how lazy I can be, how unproductive I can be. So like being able to have the humility of accepting somebody else's help to make me better about not being so freaking lazy. There's so, something else I learned too. It's, good. it's how much of your time are you choosing what you're doing and how much of your time are you letting somebody else choose what you're doing? You know, are, you, like, are you asking me? No, no. Oh, okay, I'm just okay. saying, like, if you think of it like that, is, are you choosing to procrastinate and not do anything? You know, are you choosing that you have to do your homework or you know, great stuff, you know, like, that's the point is, like, you putting it off, yes, because you can, but then that dictates, you know, how pressed for time, how fast you gotta get done, all that other stuff. You know, for me, you know, my family kind of presses upon me what I need to be doing at certain times. <laughs> Work presses upon me what I need to be doing at certain times. You know, when am I choosing what I want to do? Well, there's my lunch break. There's 10 o'clock at night recording a podcast. You know, there's that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about it. Those two things. So let's let's get in this idea of, of Mickler's, Mickler's mindset. Like, what is the mindset that we need in order to go into being humble like to, to be able to develop so, so basically 100 percent arrogance pride or confidence keep you from learning what you need to be successful i mean i agree with that if you don't know what you don't know how do you know you need it right mm -hmm. you know you're just mm -hmm. too arrogant too prideful too mm -hmm. overconfident so the mindset adopted is i am a learner you know mm -hmm. not i am better than everybody else not i'm good to go it's i am a learner so that way that mindset helps you put you in the right place and of course, he makes the tie back to the children. You know, the children are naturally curious. You know, they have no shame, no qualms, and and they're not really frowned upon to ask questions. So, of course, right. I mean, he goes to point out that they ask so many questions that that's why the quiet game was invented. You know, so right. you can be quiet the longest, right? Because basically, you're talking too much, son. You need to stop, stop yeah. talking. Um. But like one of the one of the interesting things, just something I thought about when he was talking about this idea of adopting the mindset of I am a learner and, and, and not going in with arrogance or, or, or overconfidence. I think I think back to like NFL teams, like when you've got like like 
there's there's a new documentary out called The Man in the Arena where it talks about Tom Brady and, and basically his transition into being probably the greatest football player of all time. Um, and like the, the biggest the biggest thing is like at the very beginning he was always learning. He was like he was like I'm watching film, I'm asking questions, I'm sitting behind, like I'm talking to Drew Bledsoe, I'm talking to da 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 da. And so it's so it's really fascinating just to kind of like see that, and then also coming across other like like a, a, a Jamarcus Russell who was really old like a long time ago back when the, the Raiders were in Oakland he was the first first draft pick and he would just not do anything like he basically just relied on on his skills and his talent and he didn't actually go and try and learn the game or go and try and learn more and, it, and it's really interesting to sit there and see especially ones who people who get drafted so late are like really pushing themselves to learn because they want to get better as for those who are drafted early for the most part, they're like, nah, I'm good. I, I know my, I know my stuff. I'm good to go. And so you have that overconfidence, that arrogance versus the one who's got the chip on your shoulder and is trying to push. And it's humble enough to realize I'm not as good as I think I am and I need to get better. And this is how I get better is by asking. Well, so they, not to mention they've been, they've been humbled. And so that got something. Mm, mm, you know, mm-hmm. when you've been humbled in life, you know, somebody's humbled you, you know, like they, you know, life has put you in the place where you belong. Of course you want to strive to be better. You're like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not this person. I'm mm-hmm. not this person. I'm going to beat the odds. I'm going to beat my own butt to be better, to be where I think I should be. So actually, I'm, I'm going to lay some. I'm going to lay lay some good lyrics down on you. I'm going to lay some good bars down on you. The biggest challenge with humility, and the reason why it's so connected to strength, is that when when someone humbles you, if you have the mental fortitude and the emotional resilience to take that and to ingest it, and then be able to use that to become better then true humility can come in. But especially in today's day and age where it's like either parents have told you you're the best, you're the greatest, so humility doesn't need to be there, or you've, you've, you've shown that you, you can be really good at something, and so you, you're like, I'm the best at this, and so you don't need to be humble. Then when somebody comes in, something comes in, somebody comes in and humbles you, whichever way that that may be, then all of a sudden you break because – you don't have the mental fortitude or the emotional resiliency to handle that pressure of not being the best that you thought you were or not being who you thought you were. And so like that, that definitely is a huge, huge issue that we have in, in today's society. I feel is that, is that people are, are, are so catered to that they don't have to be humble, but if something literally humbles them, losing a job, running, going into bankruptcy, getting dumped by a girlfriend or a boyfriend, like anything along those lines. And all of a sudden it's like, whoa, wait, hold on, hold on. She doesn't love me anymore. She doesn't like me anymore. Why, 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 why? I'm the greatest, but you're not. And so if you have this strength and resiliency, if you have the failures that come after being humbled, then yeah, you, you can be more prepared to be humble. All right, let's get into the skill set. Be curious. First one. Mm-hmm. Oh, foundational skill set to become more humble is simply being curious. Uh, you can pretend you know what you're talking about, or you can take the time to learn something new. So the question is, do you want to be stalemated or expand your knowledge? Mm-hmm. And then include others, you know, humble people include others. And what, what he's saying there and what he points out is like, you didn't get where you are today without somebody helping you along the way. Mm-hmm. You know, granted parents. So it doesn't hurt to get those involved. You know, everybody needs a team. Everybody needs somebody there to help them at one point in time. Yeah. Ask for yeah. help. Include others. Yep. So with that in mind, so this idea of being curious, being curious about, especially about things that you don't know and being, you know, therefore asking inquisitive, like getting information. And then including others, you know, making sure that, that you're 
asking people for help and asking them to guide you. Um, and I don't think one of the things that was interesting is like, I, I immediately jumped to this idea of like a life coach. And like, to me, I think you need coaches. Like I need a coach for working out because for two reasons. One, I'm paying the money and that that's what kind of like drives me in order to work out. But also I need a coach there to like push me beyond my normal limits. I think I need a coach for like certain things like, but I'm not going to go get a life coach. Cause, cause the thing is, is like most, most of these quote unquote business coaches or life coaches, they've never had a business or their business is coaching. And it's like, and why would I, why would I listen to like, just, just like, just like I wouldn't necessarily listen to somebody who uh, like, like for me, I wouldn't go out and coach children on how to play soccer because I don't know how to play. But why am I going to listen to a life coach who, is younger than me or why would I listen to a life coach who pretty much the only experience they have with a quote unquote life is, is, you know, having this business or this business coach who's only had this coaching business and that's all they've done. They actually haven't actually started another business. Like to me that that's crazy. That's asinine. But there are people out there who have had businesses who you can reach out to. There are people out there who are losing weight. There are people out there who are parents. There are people out there who have a great marriage and being able to go and ask them and, and, and get them to help you out. And then also, you know, being uh, respectful or not respectful, but, but including them on just the life's journey that you're going on, you know, and, and, and being appreciative of that. So, in that regards, who would you who would you give credit to? And this is this is not just for you, bro, but but for anybody who's listening or, or watching. Who would you give credit to and thanks for their contributions to you, and 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 to their contributions of where you are currently? All right, well, we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, if you are listening on your favorite podcast, please subscribe, leave us a review and a comment. Uh, let us know how we're doing. Uh, if you're on YouTube. Subscribe, click the bell, leave a comment below. Um, the sovereignty set will be up and the last video uh, that we did on chapter 12, uh, ownership, will also be up. Don't forget to subscribe, click that bell. That way you get notified when we are uh, back on. And um, I'm Nick. I'm Andrew. Have a great night. Peace.